Hello, everyone. Hello, Verbliantites. Welcome to this class. The class is on office speak or jargon. I hope you all are able to come. I apologize that I was a little late. My computer actually had to, had to restart right before, and that was just an unfortunate thing. Um, I was ready 10 minutes beforehand, so, um, but the computer just stopped working. Anyway, shall we get started? Um, hopefully people are able to come. So, um, my name is Holly and I'll be the teacher for this hour and we, we are going to do um, a little bit of business eat. English about office speak. Hi, C Cornell, how are you? Uh, hi, Holly. Mm, I am retired because uh, it is uh, 6 a.m. in Hungary and wow. uh, I've just woken up uh, yeah. Yeah, to, to join the lesson. Ah, awesome. Well, I hope you yes, get a lot out of this. Yeah, subject uh, would be very interesting uh, for me, so um, I am waiting for the lesson. Yeah. And, uh, it I, and I will, will get some new, new information and the new, new work ever. Yeah, that's that's the hope. That's definitely the hope. And hi, Lewis. How are you today? Hi, teacher. How are you? Oh, very good. I, about three minutes before the class was supposed to start, I was I had to restart my computer. So everything that I had set up, <laughs> having to reset it. So uh, that's how my day's been. So, Wilson, where are you from? Okay. I'm from Colombia. Columbia, okay. So what time is it in Columbia right now? Uh, 11 five, zero five, 11. 11 .05. Okay. So 11 05. Okay. And uh, Cornell, it's 05. 6 6 05 a.m. in um in Hungary, right? And um and then for me it is um 10 p.m. or 10:05 p.m. So, excellent. So bear with me as a, a moment. Um, when you guys think of uh, office speak and office jargon, can you guys think of uh, think of some specific phrases or sayings that you have heard in your career? Mm, yes, yes. Uh, I have uh, uh, reviewed uh, the vocabs and. Uh, mm, the, the words are very very interesting and uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it is it is uh, likely uh, in the office. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so have you have you uh, oh, so you looked at the PDF for this class? Um, have you used any of the words? More or less, yes. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Let's uh, bear with me a moment. I I do apologize. My computer had to restart, and I'm trying to open up my files and. I've got a, either a PowerPoint or a PDF, and neither one of them are opening up. It's like, oh no! <laughs> okay, so bear with me. Okay, um, all right. So um, this is kind of a weekend for me. I'm going to, for the next 24 hours, I'm not going to work. So, um, and I'm planning, planning on maybe driving uh, on a long drive. Uh, what do you guys have plans for your weekend when you start your weekend? I know it's only Wednesday, <laughs> Thursday. You guys have plans for the weekend? Uh, Holly, uh, it is a question uh, uh, by the weekend or... or uh, or uh, the last weekend? Uh, for the future, your plans. Future. Yeah. Mm, I am planning to, to, to go to the gym and uh, I am a member of the uh, football club and uh, uh -huh. I, I must participate in the football match uh, on, on Sunday. Uh-huh, okay. Yeah, and, and of course uh, uh, I am playing, uh, I am playing uh, with my uh, uh, Sam, uh, who, uh, who is uh, three months? How, oh, old. three months old! Wow. Yeah. Okay. Congratulations. 
Yeah, thanks so much. And how about you, Louis? What do you plan on doing over your over the weekend? I know it's over several days weekend. away. Yeah. What are your okay, plans? Uh, I like to to go to to work out. Uh huh. Okay. Go to the beach and run on the do uh, on the beach. Uh huh. The beach. Wow. Uh, I stay with my friends. Um, I think that I go out to a big company. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. And bring a little. <laughs> and and tell me about your dog there. My dog. Okay. <laughs> I run with my dog. Oh, uh, do you? Yeah, in the beach, and he followed me. <laughs> uh huh. So on the beach. Yeah, so uh, the during beach. Oh, on the street. Oh, okay. And Sunday early in the morning. Uh huh. I always try to 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 run uh, five or six kilometers. Uh huh. Yeah. So, so does does your dog? No? Yeah, it's my dog. <laughs> okay, on the beach. Can can your dog run faster than you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah, he's fast. Uh huh. Okay, excellent, excellent. I'm kind of um, ha uh, bear with me a moment. Uh, as far as the the PDF, uh, Luis, have you looked at it yet? Yeah, I got the PDF. Um, bear with me. Okay, so um, for some reason the Hangouts is not letting me screen share. So if you can, you can open this PDF. You're welcome to. Let me. Bear with me. No. No. So if you could, guys could open up on this link. If you can open up the. Um, uh, the PDF right there, and then we can get started. Sorry about the uh, confusion here. All right. So today's uh, topic is on Office Speak, which is a, a really cool to a topic. Um, and so let's go ahead and get started. Um, yeah, my computer. Uh. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay. Bear with me. Is everybody here? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, what happened? Bear with me. So, okay. So, um, Cornell, could you read the words on the first line? Yeah. Admir okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry yeah. about that. It's okay. <laughs> this isn't normal, Louise. <laughs> yeah. Qu quiet is, is, uh, is better than... Yeah. Okay. First, look. Yeah. Okay. Admiration. Cliche. Coin. Impact. Jargon. Okay. Admiration. So we we actually stress this word right here. Okay. Next one. Uh, Louise, could you read these these words? Okay. Par parody. Proliferation. Scrabble. Sedentary. Tiresome. Okay. So how I pronounce it? Parody. 
proliferation is perfect. And then we say scribble. A scribble. S sedentary? A seden sedentary. I'm sorry. Sedentary. Seden sedentary. Sedentary and tiresome. Okay. So let's see if we can um, match these words with the, with the phrase. So, um, and if you, have you guys had a chance to read these at all? Uh, Cornell, you said you did? No, sorry, could you please repeat it? Have you, did you, you said you looked at this ahead of time, so you are, have you read this through? Yeah, sedentary, uh -huh. uh, <clears throat> sedentary um, is, is a known for me. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I do sedentary work. Yes. That's yeah, okay. in, in the office uh, because uh, I I I uh, I am uh, uh, I, I sit uh, all the day. Uh huh. And and Louise, you know this word sedentary. Sedentary is a person that who who doesn't exercise. Exactly. They sit all the time. Maybe because of their work or because of their hobbies and stuff like that. So you, like you run, so you're not sedentary. Are you sedentary in your work? Yeah. Yeah. What kind of work do you do? Okay, I'm a, a salesman of uh, spare parts. Ah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Are there any other words that you guys do not know? Are, are these all um, new for you? I mean, uh, or anything? Uh, any here? Tire, tire, Sam. Um, the last one, it means uh, that uh, something is boring. Yes, exactly. If if you have somebody who is very very boring, you might say he gets tiresome. Yeah, I I, ha I have a, a tiresome day uh, when uh, uh, I I have to uh, do the mono monotone work. So uh -huh. the the task uh, tasks uh, are the same as as. Uh, uh, yeah, are the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the t basically the my, the um, the work that you do can sometimes get tiresome. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Well, let's go ahead and see if we can ma match these words with their definition. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's match these words with their definition. Okay. So um, number one. Um, Cornell, can you read this one right here? Yeah, technical special words and phrases used by particular groups of people, especially in work, usually disapproving. Yeah, which which one is uh, is the best? Uh, I'm yeah. I'm thinking of it. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. And then um. Uh, Louise could help as well. <laughs> yeah, I have the same problem with. I have the same problem. I don't know what's the. The phrase, the the word. I think that could be jargon. Yeah, it is jargon. Yeah, exactly. It is. It is jargon. <laughs> I'm a rookie. It, it, yeah. Jargon. Yeah, jargon. So we pronounce it jargon. So jargon yeah. is is words basically that your in, people in your industry or where you um, uh, work know, but people outside your industry do not know it unless unless if, you know. So you have legal jargon, jargon, or you have IT jargon, things like that. Okay, number two, uh, Louise, could you read that? Okay. Okay, number two is a, a comment that is not original and not interesting because it is used so often. Because it is used so often. Used so often. Okay, can anybody? I think it could be cliche. Cliche. Cliche, yes. Exactly. It's similar to Spanish. Oh, is it? Well, that, that makes it nice. Okay, and number three, what is boring or annoying? Annoying yeah, uh, uh, is the last one, tiresome. Tiresome, yes. Three, okay. And what, uh, number uh, four, um, uh, Cornell, could you read that one? Yeah, and that's that something 
Ez nem szinte teljesen nem találtam. Uh... A parody? No. A, a parody is... No, it's not a parody. It could be a situation uh, as well. Or uh, impact. Impact, yeah. So it's impact. So In impact. It is a f flight or. Uh, well, any any type of thing that has an impact on you. Uh, or, for or or, uh, or argument. An argument could be an impact. Could make an impact on somebody. Um, like uh, for children, if their parents divorce, it makes an impact on them. So any anything that happens that um, that can can. Uh, change the person makes an impact. A movie can make an impact on somebody. Okay. Uh, number number five to invent. Usually a new word or expression. This one might be might be quite difficult. The word coin. Okay. As a noun. It means um, it means you know our our money, right? Yeah. Yeah. But as a verb, it means uh, it means to invent. Usually, uh, uh, he coined a new word. Um, uh, so it's something like that. Uh, it's not used that much, but most of us as native speakers will understand it just by the context of it. Um, but it is, it basically means you, in, you have invented something new. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, number six. Um, uh, Luis, could you read that? Uh, to write something in a hurry and without taking care. Yeah. Any idea what that would be? Proliferation. No. It's actually scribble. It is scribble. And um, okay. a scribble means basically you write something down. Like, for example, you could see, you could think that my little um, uh, mouse writing, it's really scribbles because it's hard to read. Um, but uh, if it's somebody that, um, for example, a child. The first thing that they do before they learn their letters and numbers, if they you give them a pen or a pencil, they scribble. That's what the, where the word comes from. So if some as if an adult, an, uh, uh, somebody who can read and write, if they scribble, it's because they're not they're they're in a hurry. So they are not really caring how it looks. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, great respect and approval for someone. Which one would that be? The first one. I think. Yes. Exactly. Um, Seven. Okay. And uh, let's go quickly. The sudden and rapid spread of something. Any idea what that one would be? Yeah, Prol proliferation. So if something is, is spread real, really rapidly, um, it is a proliferation. It is a word that I have read many times, but it is not in my active vocabulary. I, ne I would never use it personally. Um, nine, involving a lot of sitting and little exercise or physical activity. Which one would that be? Sedentary. Sedentary. Yeah. Sedentary. And there's, I think you have two, the sedentary is the British pronunciation, and Americans we say sedentary. I've heard sure. both. So uh, number uh, 10, a work of art, writing, music, film, etc., which intentionally copies and exaggerates the style of someone famous or a particular situation for comic effect. So you do something for laughs, and that's a parody. Um, are you guys familiar with uh, it, the t American TV show Saturday Night Live? Yeah. 
that's basically that's what it is parodies all the way through so are you have you heard it yeah okay all right let's go to the next one okay this is this is what I thought would be really fun um, Let's see, look at the following office cl cl cliches often used in Europe. Okay, most of these are also used in the States. Not all, all of them, but most of them. Have you heard any of them? Okay, so we're going to talk about them and then we'll match it to, to this first, uh, uh, match it to this. So we've got think outside the box. It's not rocket science. Let's touch base. Swallow the frog. Push the needle. Shoot the puppy. Okay, so have you guys heard of any of these or used any of these? Mm, not yet. Uh, are there idioms? Yeah, they're idioms. Uh huh. And no. uh, jargon. No. No. Okay, and they're they're actually quite fun and quite fun to use. Um, think outside the box. Um, bear with me a moment. Um, I found the origins of, of these, and let me uh, copy and paste for you what they mean. Bear with me a moment. Okay. Okay, so the origins of, of these. Think outside the box. Have you guys heard of the... Uh, it's a very, very common business cliche um, where a person um, uh, uh, where a person doesn't think the same way as everyone else. Have you guys heard that one? It could be letter D. It could be what? Letter D. Say that again. No, could be the letter D. Looks at things from a new perspective. Exactly, exactly. It's basically where they look things at from a new perspective. So I'm putting something on the chat, and this is, this explains it. The most common of business. Oh, okay. Wait, this is this most common of business cliches originally. Uh, originally, the dot puzzle used in the Walt Disney uh, Company. Uh, the solution to the puzzle involved drawing. Um, drawing a line outside the dot box. Um, oh wow, it didn't copy and paste correct. So basically, there's a there's a Wikipedia. Um, Hi. Uh, think outside the box, and it and it, it explains it a little bit. Um, on the verbling chat, chat. Let me quickly show you guys. Um, I'm thinking outside the box. It means you think completely different. Um, it's not showing. I apologize. It's it's. You ever have a day where nothing works out? Okay, <laughs> that's Holly's day today. Yeah. Uh, so think outside the box is D. Look at things from a new perspective. Exactly, but it's it was started from a from something from Walt Disney. Walt Disney did that. Okay, next one. It's not rocket science. Any, anybody know what that is? It's not difficult to understand. It, uh, it could be a new, new information or, or um, it belongs to a new information or, or I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be B. It, actually, it's not difficult to understand is what it is. So B, yep, new information. So basically, uh, it, it, the phrase was coined during, mm -hmm. the, the phrase was coined during World War II, and um, basically they would say, "Don't be stupid. 
it's not rocket science. So it's not mm -hmm. difficult to understand. Okay. Yeah. Let's touch base. What would that be? Any idea? Um, are you guys familiar with base? Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. no. Could we see? No. Um, let's touch base. Yes. Uh, well, yes. Bear with me a moment. It is C. Yeah. This actually comes from a baseball Indian. Are you guys familiar with base uh, baseball? Yeah. Uh, you know how they have to touch every base. Mm hmm. That's basically yeah. what that comes from. So to touch base. So yeah. let's keep in contact. And touch and, and uh, contact uh, with our family or exactly. like e each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Swallow the frog. Any, what, is that, what does that mean? Swallow the frog. Any guess? Frog. <laughs> so basically, for swallow the frog, let me read you to what what it mean, what read you what the background is. The phrase first crops up in 1884 in Mark Twain's classic novel, The Adventure of Huckleberry Finn. Huck's best friend, Tom Sawyer, says, if you have to swallow a frog, don't look at it too long, which suggests that the more you delay doing something difficult or unpleasant, the worse it gets. So what do you think? Would be A. A, yeah. Do the most unpleasant task first. Exactly. And I just started hearing that just this last year, so it's moved over to the U.S. Push the needle. And this, this expression was inspired by motoring, the needle being the speedometer or uh, the speedometer on the car or the rev counter. So what would that be? Uh, uh, take things to the next level. Yes. If you yeah. push the needle, you take things to the next level. And now for shoot the puppy. This phrase is thought to come from a satirical advertisement for a fictitious U.S. game show in the early 1980s in which the audience would be offered money to shoot a pu puppy being held by a small child. The money on offer would then be reduced to see who would shoot the bu puppy just to get their face on TV. And of course, that's make a brutal, brutal decision. Um, this one I have actually never heard until I read this article. So that one is new for me. All the rest of it, this is American as well. This one's American. This one's American. Yeah, all, all the rest are American as well. We use these as well. It's very common in American corporations as well. So shoot the puppy I've never heard. So, Okay, so let's go ahead and, and read through this. Um, few things are as irritating as the jargon of the modern workplace. But what do our everyday office catch, catchphrases really mean and where do they come from? Okay. Um, would you guys like to read this out loud to practice pronunciation, or do you want me to read it so you can uh, comprehend it? Uh, both. <laughs> uh, both. Okay, we'll do both. Um, what I will do is I will read paragraph two, and then Cornell, you do two, three. Uh, Louise, uh, two. Uh, sorry, I will do one. Cornell, two. Louise, three. Then I'll do four. Cornell, five. Louise, six. And then Cornell, seven. And Louise, eight. How's that? Okay. Okay. And please, uh, um, uh, we we will read. Let's read one paragraph, and then if there's any words you do not know, 
uh, we'll talk about it and then we'll go to the next paragraph. Okay. Okay. Teacher, could you yes. in increase the zoom? Increase um increase it. Uh bear with me. Let's let me so it's hard to see. Okay. I will bring it over. I moved everything to PDF because sometimes it's easier to see. Is this better? Yeah. We'll start. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It probably won't surprise you to learn that thinking outside the box has just been mo voted the most overused business cliche in the country. According to a poll sponsored by the gaming company Ubisoft. Apparently, thinking outside the box, which refers to looking at things from a new perspective without preconceptions, was invented by some suit in the Walt Disney Organization years ago. Tiresomely enough, it is even now being used by apparently serious office workers, not least as a slogan by the Welsh Development Agency. Okay, so do you, uh, do you guys know other words in this? Yeah. Okay. The you, guys know, the you guys know what that means? It was invented, invented by some suit in the Walt Disney Organization. Any idea what that would be? Repeat, teacher. Yeah. Do you see the sentence? It was this was invented by some suit in the Walt Disney Organization years ago. What does that mean? Some suit. Uh, 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 is whatever department, the part our uh, department is into the organization. Actually, in in English, uh, uh, that could be that would be department, but in this word, it actually means a worker, a business per a worker who wears a suit. Usually, when you talk about Oh, we just had some suits come through. They're usually not just a worker. They're usually upper management in a, in an organization. So it this was invented by some uh, executive executive in the Walt Disney organization. Okay. So suit uh, suit, suit is a, a jacket. Yeah, it's it's basically the 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 formal wear that the men men use. Exactly. Okay, in Spanish it's like corbata. Yeah, I don't know. I unfortunately don't know Spanish. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's what you guys would wear to a wedding or to a job interview, you know, to church some for depending on the church. So, okay, next one. Uh, Cornell, can you read this? Yeah. No. The second one. In fact, next time you are on a British Airways flight, look at for uh, WD is little and during the in-flight movie program. In Wales, thinking outside the box comes naturally, says the voice over. Although the organization thinking is obviously not sufficiently outside the box enough for for them to to uh, uh, avoid using the cliché things. Think outside the box. Okay, so it's a little add. This is a word you kind of missed. Add. Um, at, compared to the first time I heard you read, uh, Cornell, that was actually quite good because you're slowing down. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, there's there's some s s uh, like for example, there's some sounds that are hard, but um, you're actually it's you're actually coming coming along. Um, are there any words or phrases? Mm. That you guys do not know. Voice over. What, what does it mean? Um, you know when you listen to the radio. Hmm? You, you know when you listen to the radio, and the pr there's music, and, or or watch TV, and there's a commercial on TV, and there's a somebody speaking. Mm -hmm. That's the voiceover. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Luis, could you read the next paragraph? Okay. Anyway, you may agree with the pulse verdict, or you may disagree. 
having your own less favorite bit of business jargon. After all, there's plenty of irritating phrases that refuse to die. Okay, this word right here, it, the E-A makes it least, east. So least. least, least, perfect. Okay, number four. It is not rocket science is another much hated example, but it hardly has the impact in an office environment these days that it might once have enjoyed since it is heavily overused. Word experts believe this most patronizing of phrases meaning, duh, are you stupid, came into the American business community's consciousness during the Cold War when, when rockets were first, first developed. The act of launching craft into space was considered so extraordinary that the science behind it was presumed to be extremely difficult. So anything else must be relatively easy. The big question is, what phrase rocket scientists might choose to employ when they decide to patronize one of their respective respected colleagues. Okay, are there any words or phrases in here? Patronizing. Okay, patronize. When you patronize somebody, it's basically to patronize means to talk down to somebody. To talk down to someone. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes um, if you have a, uh, a leader in an organization and they have, um, uh, they're young and they're uh, insecure, they might talk down or they might patronize their employees. Mm -hmm. So their employees know more than them, but they might patronize them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. To talk down. Any uh, other that, words in here? Yeah, Van does a, consci a consci consciousness. Okay. Um, consciousness. Consciousness here means the the way that people were thinking. The like uh, right now, the American consciousness is about um, about uh, the what what will happen in to our finances. What's going to happen to our economy? That's what the business community's consciousness now is going over, right? Mm -hmm. But at that time, it was during the Cold War, and uh, they were really, really thinking about, thinking about rockets and and you know what happens if if Russia invades us or what happens if we invade Russia, that kind of stuff. To share on um, patronizing uh, is the is the ver is the same bear with ing. Uh, yeah, uh, patronizing yes. Okay, and um, what means heavily overused? Saying it is heavily overused. Okay, basically, uh, what the author is saying in here is, is he's saying that uh, organizations say this phrase too much. So if something is heavily heavily overused, it is used too much. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other words? No. Okay. Right. Let's go to the next paragraph. Um, uh, okay. Let's start. Uh, as far it is strange how the greatest of tribes of uh, uh, tribes, uh, the accountants, the management consultants, uh, the other senior executives and team. Oops. <laughs> let's. And team leaders have managed to coin. Usages that all on now overused and abused were once colorful, fresh, and filled with the, with meaning. Once upon a time, let's touch base must have been a relati relatively charming way of getting business contact. If I can use that expression to keep in touch, when someone get up in a po in a PowerPoint presentation. PowerPoint. PowerPoint presentation and said for the first time in, in human history that they wanted their company or department to push the needle, meaning take things to the next level. 
it must have stimulated corporate minds. Swallow the, the frog is a more recent innovation which has not yet uh, be become boring and nice, nicely expresses the idea of getting the nastiest task of the day out of the way first. But soon, as with all its predecessors, it will quickly become tedious and uninspiring. Very good. Uninspiring. Very good. Um, yeah, there were there were several words. The the one that s stood out to me was this. Can you go ahead and read this to me, senior? Yeah, uh, on the first line, how the greatest of tribes. Yeah, could, for, as far as pronunciation, could you repeat this word for me that's on the bottom, senior executives? Could you say that? Senior executives. Okay, senior executives. Okay. Executives. We, yeah, we have the verb to execute, and so people want to to pronounce it like that, but we actually pronounce it executive. 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 Um, it, it is stra strange how the grayest of tribes, uh, the accountants uh, and the management consultants, the oh dear senior executives and team um, team leaders, uh, basically when they say, what do you think of the word, well, first of all, when you think of colors, Luis and, and Cornell, when you think of colors, what do you think of the color gray? Gray is it is, it is, it is bo boring color. <laughs> yeah, it's boring. That's what they're saying. So the grayest of tribes, meaning meaning the the accountants, the management consultants, the senior executives, and the team leaders, they're usually the boring people in companies, right? Yeah. So that's what they're saying. Basically, the boring, even the boringest people in the organization, um, are coining phrases. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Um, that are overused. So, you know, accountants, I'm sorry if anybody's an accountant, but many people think accountants are boring. So, um, yeah, okay. You are, you are right. Fortunately. Um, anyway, mm -hmm. there's any, any other words in this paragraph? In, in, in that case, coined is... Is create. Yes. Half, half manage create yeah. usage. Yeah. Different to, ways. Yeah, to invent a saying, to invent a phrase. So to coin usages that we use and abuse now. We we use it too much and we abuse it. So for example, colorful. let's touch colorful. base. Um, were once the, the colorful, fresh, and filled with meaning means they were. It was if something's colorful, fresh, and filled with meaning, it's it's exciting, and people are ex ex excited to hear it. And um, like uh, sh right now, um, uh, what is it? Swallow the frog. The fo follow the frog is still new. And there's one in the states about a squirrel too. So, <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, fresh and filled with meaning it just means it's uh, new and exciting. So, any other words? Okay. Uh... Push the the needle. Is the same phrase. Is is the phrase to I I don't it, remember what means. It it means ta meaning take things to the next level. Take things to the next level. Okay. Yeah. So okay. I have an unknown word. It is a predecessors. Okay, a predecessor. Okay. Predecessors, uh, predecessors are people or things that come before you. So, um, um, like you, if you get a new boss, your old boss is her, her or his predecessor. If you get a new wife, your old wife is the predecessor. <laughs> so. 
anything that comes before. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, next one. Um, Luis. Okay. But why? Why bother, why bother with expressions such as shoot the puppy? Meaning make a brutal decision. Okay, make. Say make. Ma make a brutal decision. Par par parley is a matter of competition. The more memorable, m memorable and li lightly am 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 amusing the word scra scrabble on a fleet chart. The more admiration the inventor will receive. Partly is a matter, a matter of confusing the uni, uninitiated. Uninitiated. Un, uninitiated. Mm -hmm. and, and keeping them out. Mostly talk, talk is no. probably, though is probably because there really isn't much that is genuinely. New for people in business to get excited about. Okay, this is genuinely. Genuine, genuinely. Genuinely. Yeah, it comes from the verb genuine. Okay. It's original. No worries. Um, yeah, original. It's a. Um, okay. um, are there any words here? Yeah. Uh, uninitiated. Oh, okay, uninitiated. Um. In initiate uh, means uh, that something uh, is is first, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like it's it, if you initiate somebody into a club, they mm -hmm. become a men a member to initiate mm -hmm. a club member. Okay, mm -hmm. if somebody is uninitiated, it means that they have not. Um, they're, if they're uninitiated, they have not really joined the club. They haven't joined, in this respect, it's they haven't joined the way of thinking. The uninitiated would be a person who does not use the company jargon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so they, they're uninitiated. Okay, Any, uh, anything yeah. else? And uh, genuinely or Mm. I don't know the correct pronouns. Is, uh, Gen genuinely. Genuinely. Okay. So there are really isn't much that is um, uh, genuinely, um, originally, or um, if something is genuine, it's um, uh, it's. Oh God, what is it? I'm trying to think of a synonym of genuine, and my mind is blank. Um, if something uh, is something is true and uh, uh, original, um, it's not fake. I think the, sure, yeah? the best the best something would be is, something is, uh, something if something's is real. It's real. Real, yeah, okay. If something's genuine, it's real. It's not fake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so basically, in this, he's saying that um, that most that we we overuse the jargon, and um, and there's really not anything new anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, number seven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Despite the proliferation of laptops and Blackberries and the Excel spreads heat, working in, in an office is a is a, as sedentary and limiting as it ever was. Some people love to rebrand old tired ideas in different ways, often to justify their own existence. Yeah. So some people love to rebrand old tired ideas in different ways often to justify their own existence any any questions on here no rebrand no. re re is to create a new mm -hmm. is, is to create a new a new brand again 
Yes, to re like I, I would say the best way of rebranding is, um, uh, like, do you guys remember the Rubik's cube? No. Yeah, no. Um. Uh. Bear with me. This is this is a game that came out when I was a kid. Okay, and um, I I, ne I after um after I grew up I never saw it again. And now, I'm seeing it all the time. Okay. Do you guys remember those? Oh, okay. Review. Yeah. Okay. It is. It is a. Uh, it is Hungarian. Is it Hungarian? Well, they re rebranded. Yeah. I mean, they didn't rebrand, but they came out again, and they came out like it was new. So the so the kids all think it's new, and we're like, oh yeah, we've seen that before. The person <laughs> who was invited. Uh, is uh, an Rubik. Oh really? So it 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 is truly. It's uh, it came from Hungary. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't ever know the. Uh, everything um, comes origins. from Hungary. <laughs> oh really? Well, my dog does. He was born there. Yeah, so. <laughs> so Louise, could you read the next one? Okay. The absurdities of office life. Including its strange language, have been joked, joked, joked about many times over the years. But sometimes, sometimes, as this example demonstrates, the word of bespeak really is used beyond parody. So basically, uh, first of all, the word joked, the, it's it's J O K, and it's like a T sound, joked. Okay, yeah. Joked. Don't finish in T or D. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. The world, it really is just beyond parody. So basically, he's saying that uh, there's so many, so much jargon in business and office life um, that it's just a joke. <laughs> okay. So, any words here what? that you do not know? Bizpeak. Bizpeak. Okay, bizpeak is basically another way of saying jargon or business English. Um, the way, bids, jargon is the best way to pronounce it. So, jargon. Okay, and it looks um, looks like we're uh, out of time. So um, I just want to real quickly go over some of so, go over these words again with you. What does uh, jargon mean? Jargon is a uh, is, is a technical special technical or special word and phrase used by particular people, especially okay. in their world. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. What does parody mean? Parody is a comedy. Yes, pretty much. Comedy is the best thing to do. What, is, what does it mean to coin a phrase? To coin. Coin is create. To create something, yeah. And usually it's a phrase or words. You can uh, coin vocabulary. Like, I don't, has anybody, do you, are we all verblingites? <laughs> Have I, yeah. I think I've, I'm coining a phrase. We're all verblingites. Okay. What is a cliche? Cliche is okay. Cliche is um, the sudden and rapid spread of something. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, a comment that is not original and not interesting because it's used so often. It is used so often. Yeah. Yeah. When when you use a, a word that is repeat, 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 repeat. Uh huh. And the author says that some of these are cliches. They're used too much. So. Could be Any, like a song. Yeah. Anyway, um, I do apologize for the beginning. I truly did not expect my um, my computer to do that. Uh, so. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys learned some new words and phrases that you can take, and uh, please uh, download the um, uh, uh, the the PDF and and go through it again and study it a little bit more. So thank you very much for your active participation. Uh, please check the chat box. Uh huh. Uh, Is this? Did you find the the what I was looking for? Yeah, uh, you can find the information uh, about uh, Anna Rubik. Oh, cool. Okay, I just opened it. Yeah, yeah I'll look at that. Yeah, Thank please you very check much. It. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Okay, All right, thanks. thanks so much. Thanks, bye. Oh, bye, bye. Bye.